Good evening. We begin NASA's television coverage of mission STS-79 here at the John F. Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We are just hours away from NASA's 79th space shuttle launch and the 17th flight of the orbiter Atlantis with a crew of six astronauts. Liftoff is planned at 4.54 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The window extends until 5.01 a.m. today. The weather conditions are holding steady. Looks like we've got a 70% chance of having acceptable conditions for launch time. Launch pad 39A is the stage for the 79th shuttle launch. All countdown events are on schedule, and the launch team here in firing room one is not tracking any technical issues that would pre preclude an on-time liftoff. Countdown clock is at T-minus three hours and holding. We're in a standard built-in hold at this point. This is a planned two-hour built-in hold. At this time, the ICE inspect the final inspection team is uh, surveying for any ice that may have formed on the vehicle, measuring uh, various elements of the STS-79 vehicle stack. We've now got the STS-79 astronauts having their lunch at the uh, crew quarters. Got uh, mission specialist Jay Apt. Light crew is in, uh, in their suits. They've been up since about 6 p.m. We've got pilot Terry Wilcutt, Commander Bill Reedy. Crew looks wide awake. Mission Specialist Tom Akers. Mission Specialist Carl Walls. And Mission Specialist John Blaha. Got a veteran shuttle astronaut crew today. John getting ready to uh, start his uh, four-month stay on the Mir Space Station. As is the tradition, we've got the uh, cake at, at the table with the insignia for STS-79. We do have the flight crew members for STS-79 getting strapped in, uh, actually getting their, their suits on. We've got Commander Bill Reedy. He's making his third flight today. He has overall responsibility for commanding the flight. He will become the fourth shuttle commander to dock with the Russian space station. Pilot Terry Wilcutt. He uh, will assist Reedy at the flight controls. He's making his second flight today. He will assist in transferring logistics to and from the Mir station. He will also assist Commander Reedy in the fly around of the station after the undocking. We've got Dr. Jay Apt ready to go today. He's M Mission Specialist One making his fourth flight. He will be involved in uh, activities and experiments aboard the Space Hab. Mission Specialist uh, Tom Akers, who is also the flight engineer. He will assist the commander and pilot with the ascent and reentry checklist and in monitoring all the vehicle systems. He's making his fourth flight today. And here we have Mission Specialist John Blaha getting his flight suit tested. He's making his fifth flight today, getting ready to embark on his four month stay aboard the Mir Space Station where he will be involved in uh, scientific investigations. And we've got uh, Mission Specialist. Carl Walls getting uh, ready. He's uh, waving, uh, ready for launch today. He is making his third flight today. With the shuttle launch control, we've got Pictures now of the flight crew walking down the hall toward the elevator at their crew quarters. Jay Apt, Carl Walls, Tom Akers, Shannon Luther.
Good morning, John. We read you loud and clear. How may? Tony O, you're loud and clear. Hope you have a great stay out there, and please tell Shannon hi when you see her for me. I'll do that. Atlantis, looks like we've got uh, everything coming together here, Bill, so you guys have a great trip, and uh, we'll see you back here next week. A profile test of the orbit of aerial surfaces has started. The flight control surfaces are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify they are ready for launch. Nozzles on the three main engines are being gimbaled and positioned for launch today. I don't see much of Mars on the runner except for Thank you, John. Eleven, T minus ten, nine, eight. We have a go for engine start. One, we have booster ignition and liftoff of Atlantis on the fourth flight to dock with the Russian space station. Houston now controlling. Houston, let us roll complete. Roger, roll Roger Atlantis Roger. and your MPS H2 out. Message is a deucer only, no action. Copy. The roll maneuver is complete aboard Atlantis. The vehicle is now in a heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree 160 nautical mile orbit. Atlantis's velocity is approaching 900 miles per hour. The vehicle is already two and a half miles downrange from the launch site at an altitude of 6.6 .6 miles. Atlantis Houston, go at throttle up. Copy, go at throttle up. One minute, 25 seconds into the flight, the three liquid-fueled engines are now back at full throttle. About 35 seconds away now from uh, burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters aboard the orbiter. Atlantis is 12 and a half miles downrange from the launch site, current altitude 18 miles, traveling 2,300 miles per hour. Hydraulic systems, all three of those uh, APUs, auxiliary power units are in good shape, as are the electricity producing fuel cells standing by for SRB separation. SRB separation is confirmed two minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. Atlantis Houston reads, you have a nominal MECO. No ohms one required. Copy. Nominal Miko, no ohms one required. And you can pass along to Amir that the Atlantis is unawake. Atlantis Houston reads, I've got uh, a big picture update for you. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Reeds, uh, since you guys took Sim Soup up there with you, uh, obviously you've got us working down here, but we have AP number two as an unexplained shutdown. We're looking into the data on it, and we're also looking at the AP one and AP three capabilities and their impact on mission duration. We are currently evaluating both a flight day three and a flight day four rendezvous. If we do a flight day three rendezvous, the approximate TIG will be two hours and 56 minutes. If we do a flight day four rendezvous, the approximate TIG will be three hours and 40 minutes. 
We're working both right now, and we will provide you with further updates. Okay, Bill, we copied it all, and uh, we kind of figured as much. We'll uh, switch now to uh, Mission Control uh, Korolyov outside of Moscow for an update on activities uh, in Moscow since uh, Atlantis's launch. This is Mission Control Korolyov at about 3 p.m. Moscow time. Roughly uh, a few minutes after the launch of Atlantis today at about 1 20 p.m. Moscow time, the Mission Control Center here conducted another communication session with the crew on board Mir. The first order of business for that communication session for NASA's Mir operations lead, Bill Gerstenmeyer, was to tell Shannon Lucid the uh, status of Atlantis. Shannon, how do you copy? Oh, I copy you loud and clear. Hey, I saw the shuttle launch. You saw the shuttle launch? I thought afterwards, I mean, you know, to see it. Wow, that's great. We had a really good launch. Everything looks clean, normal performance through MECO. They're working at a fuel cell 2 problem, but that's all. Everything else looks clean on the vehicle. Oh, that sounds great. Well, just keep us uh, informed because, you know, uh, it's not here and there's no open hatch. We understand, and the only thing we're working now is the fuel cell 2 problem, but everything else looks clean, and we'll keep you informed. Okay, I mean, that's just one small step. Okay, well, we're getting there. Um, I At launch time, Mir was moving towards Central America on the ascending node of its sixth orbit of the day. Coordination activities between the control center here and the control center in Houston will move into high gear over the next few days as both the U.S. and Russian teams prepare for the docking later this week. Besides the science team, a small consulting team is here from Houston for the mission. Uh, this con team consists of both orbiter and systems, orbiter systems and timelining experts. Their job is to fa facilitate the flow of communications between Russia and the U.S. And until docking updates regarding Atlantis' progress will continue to be passed up to the crew waiting on Mir. This is Mission Control Korolev. Uh, 